Wonderful. How are you guys doing? I'm doing good. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, Foyer and Fitzy today because Gresh is getting his uh, teeth fixed, if you couldn't tell whenever he was talking. Every now and then he started to whistle. <laughs> <laughs> and you, I hope Fitzy's in charge. It's not you, right? No, oh, no, 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 no. They're letting me drive today. Thank you very much. Oh, no. Hey, hey Razor, oh, no. have you ever gotten into an Uber and thought, like, maybe this would go better if I took the wheel? <laughs> Basically every single time I get into an Uber, yes, exactly. So I know how you feel, Fitzy. Yep, gotcha. You, you need you. to you need to kind of break down this whole. Listen, I know you from Canada, and I'm sure, like you know, I don't want you to get in trouble with all your you know your countrymen if we start. What is you know, Trudeau going to tell him his citizenship yeah. is revoked I, if he speaks out against Celine Dion? <laughs> like, did you why the, the whole Celine Dion thing was odd to me, Razor, just for a bunch <laughs> of different reasons. I did they tell her? To dress like Alexander Hamilton from the play Hamilton? Did, they, she, did she think she was in a play? Well, I mean, you can't you can't do that, can you? You can't, like, judge someone's look and their fashion, especially Celine Dion. I mean, she's, she's not just Canadian. Like, she's a massive, massive global star. I mean, she can't walk in any country. Uh, and we're proud as Canadians to have uh, raised that. Hmm. Are you, though? I don't, oh yeah, for, I, I mean, kind of. I'm certainly more <laughs> so than like though? Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber, or something like that. Like, absolutely, uh, Celine Dion. She's done a lot more than than most Canadians. Uh, but I would take her over Drake anytime. Oh, Drake. Um, so, yeah, I'm not taking those guys. So, so yeah, for sure. Um, interesting. Though. Yeah, I, I don't know like how she ended up there or what. Like, I don't know what the backstory was. I didn't work the game, so I didn't ask many questions. But you're right; it was kind of odd that. Of all people, like, I was surprised she was there doing that. That was interesting. All right, so with, let's see, approximately, what, 11 games to go till the end of the regular season. Razor, what is your primary concern about the way the Bruins have been playing, specifically since the All-Star break when, uh, well, let's just be honest, like, they've been a little bit above a 500 team since then, but things aren't, uh, things aren't, Things aren't going great. The goalie controversy continues to linger on. They still get pushed around too often. Um, what's your focus? If you're if you're Monty, what is your focus down the home stretch here before the greatest playoffs in all four sports begin in just under three weeks? Jeez, Fitzy, that's negative. I mean, they, wow. you, they are still leading the NHL in points. Am I, did I miss something, or did I wake up and something's different now, or, or what? Is, um, no, this is what happens with, that you put a Patriots fan next to Fourier on a cold Friday with nothing else going on, and I can't shake the stink okay. out of me right now. So let me let me approach it this way. So the Bruins, hey, the Bruins still atop the division. Yes, they have 97 points, one of the best teams in hockey for sure. But still, there must be some area of concern that you have heading towards the playoffs in just a couple weeks. Well, so much better for Friday morning. Thank, um, you. Thank you. Listen, I think we saw a little bit after the game. Like, Monty was kind of annoyed last night, and he talked about the consistency of this group from period to period and, and trying to battle through and get to the middle on good teams like the Rangers last night. In his opinion, they weren't able to do that enough, and he thought that the Rangers were better than them. So, the, I, I don't want to say concern because, again, I, I'm at the point now, after last year especially, it's, we can talk till we're blue in the face about this group right now, but it all is going to matter in game one. Um, like, we could say they're the greatest team. You could say they're the worst team. But we're really in a holding pattern with this group in, in what they're going to do in game one of the playoffs and how their matchup is. Now, my concern is, is how hard this schedule is going to be over the next three weeks in all of the playoff teams that they're playing. And, and that also gives me, uh, gives me a good feeling that they're going to get mentally and physically tested here over the last three weeks. They will not be taken by surprise at the intensity of game one. I think they're going to get a lot of that intensity over the next couple of weeks as they get into the playoffs. So it's a bit concerning, but it's also a good thing once they get to game one. So what was the problem last night then overall? I, I I just think that Monty wanted more from the group in, in generating more offense. They had a good first period, and, and we've seen them have good first or and then a bad second or a bad first and a good second. And, and it, it's just I, – I didn't think it was really bad. The goal at the end of the second, that's a killer. They were at a good spot at that point in the game. 
and and you give that up, and now you're going into the third down. I think that, like it's just those little plays right now that that the coaching staff and I'm sure the players know that you have to shore up before you get into a seven game playoff series. So it, it seems like the details at times are what are frustrating the coaching staff. So, um, so you played uh, the Rangers three times. You lost three times in a row. Um, the most, the earliest possible time I think you can play them in the playoffs would be the Eastern Conference Championship. I'm, I'm thinking based on the way things are lining yeah. up. Now, I, I guess like it is is because you thought that you know one of the best teams was Florida. You thought you have to be worried about them, but it seems like you know the Rangers have your numbers. Like what what is? How do you kind of you know? Uh, how do you figure that out? Like, is is this something? It's gonna it's gonna be a long time before you play them. But do they have the answers to the Bruins? Is 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 the last three games kind of show other teams like this is how you beat the Bruins? I don't think so. I think I know the game in New York. I was there for that one. That was in before, right after Thanksgiving. Uh, it was a seven to five game. I, that has, that's gonna have absolutely no bearing on things. Rangers are a really good hockey team. They're they're gonna be a hard out for any team that has to play them. Again, you, you said it. Fortunately, the Bruins aren't going to see Carolina or the Rangers, and they can only see one of them in the conference finals. So if you get to that point, you'll be more than happy to, to go up against one of those teams and and try your merit. The teams are going to look differently with injuries and everything else. I think the 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 thing is, is it's the, the Bruins have got the best record against playoff teams in the NHL. So despite them being 0-3 against the Rangers, they have played playoff teams very well over this season. They just need to continue to build their game, and we're going to see a lot of that. They're playing a lot of play. They're not going to go 10-0 and 0 through these playoff teams. There's just too much at stake for the other teams, and we're going to have, they're going to have different challenges throughout it, and I think that's just kind of part of what happened with the Rangers last night and, and I guess over the three games they played them. We are speaking with hockey insider, Sunday Skate co-host, uh, television analyst, Mr. Hockey himself here at the radio station. Andrew Razor Raycroft joining the Gresham Fourier program. Today he served with Fitzy on the Harbor One Hotline. And just real quickly, like, hey, Razor, I told you I was going to call into the hockey show uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago yeah, before I left on vacation. Oh, yeah. It's called Sunday well, the, the show, the, the show where they talk about hockey. And I, I sent Ken a message, Razor, and I said, hey, uh, give me Razor's, uh, you know, hey, uh, give me Razor's phone number. I'm going to make sure he's on. Tell him I'm calling in. He's like, well, no, he's late. He's not going to. He's not going to show up till 10. <laughs> you remember yeah. that? You remember that you were late? Like you, 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 you remember your yeah. excuse for why you weren't on time? Well, of course. My daughter was in the state semifinals, and her game went to overtime, so I had to stay for it. Of course, okay. it did she win? Family went, issue. Did, did yes, she, she did? She oh, there you congratulations! There you and then they won the finals. Right. Too. That's so, a good yes, excuse. The, Blame it on the kids. Shout out to the girls. What did you want yeah, to hear? Always. What did you want to hear him say? Like, <laughs> no, she didn't, and I made her walk home. <laughs> yeah. What would you do? Like, do you, how how do you handle like a loss with your with your girls? How does that work? Well, well, I mean, they, they, I follow them in the car all the way home. They got to run all the way home, and I drive very close. There to you behind go. Them. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. Good. No <laughs> shoes. Take their shoes away. You should make them run back in skates. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's got to be tough There'll though. Be no therapy for that. Uh, you know, if I were a Raycroft child, or if I was like one of your thirteen kids, uh, the Crow Marty of Weei over here, uh, it would be so <laughs> difficult. So difficult, like playing football, following in your footsteps, or playing hockey in your footsteps, like. That's got to be, like, it'll almost be a relief. Like, Dad, I just want to be an artist. Like, whew, thank God. You know, just, it's got to be tough. I I, I hope not, but I suppose there is some of that. There's there's definitely none of that in my car or in our house. Or anything. Like, I, I would have loved that they all just played soccer and I never had to put foot in a hockey rink ever again. So they're, they could quit today and tomorrow, and uh, Dad would have no issues with that at all. So, um, I suppose there's some of that on the outside that they get at times, but uh, it's definitely not coming from from me. Because again, I could I could have three golfers. That would be pretty good. Sure, probably better. Yeah, maybe one of them catches on with Liv, and next thing you know, Dad's got an infinity pool, <laughs> Wait, well, five houses. Well, I wasn't knocking your sport, but I mean, that you can't. I mean, you could play along with them. You could be their their caddy. I mean, you can you can play to your like, ninety years old. Christian, you know, golf hockey players and golfers, especially goalies. Goalies, uh, Raycroft, uh, Andrew, what did you? Are you a golfer or like a tennis player? Like, and don't those sports do you well for like the lateral movement and the flexibility they would add, especially to netminders? 
Yeah, golf for sure. I'm a golfer. Uh, you're either kind of a golfer or a fisherman. Uh, I don't. I'm not not a big boat guy, not a big fish guy. So so no, I put me on a golf course every day. That's that's the dream. Yeah, um, I remember Henrik Lundqvist one time told me that he loved loved playing tennis just because it kept him fluid left to right. Going back to the Rangers, aka the Bruins' daddy this year, Christian. Um, you mentioned <laughs> earlier, Andrew. You mentioned earlier. So you got 11 games left, and it is a devil of a schedule that the Bruins have. You got to play the Panthers a couple of times. You get the Canes multiple times. It's not going to be an easy rest of the way. Now, of course, if they make it through that and they're battle tested. That's great. And if you go in on a hot streak against really good teams, confidence builds. Like you said, we should be speaking positively of the team that still leads the NHL in points. But it's going to be grueling and reinforcements will be necessary. Uh, is help on the way? And uh, what have you heard about Pat Maroon's status as he tries to make his way back to the team? They skated this week for the first time in a Bruins practice jersey. Probably a couple more weeks, I think. The idea for him if I was in charge would be to get him back in the, you know, now he's around the guys. So now you can start feeling comfortable as a player, get him back in a lineup or see where he fits in with what has been a really good fourth line the last month with, with Brazo coming up, Boquist really taking a, taking another step in his Bruins career and then Beecher now being up. So where he fits in the lineup will be important, how he moves around. And then, it's going to come down. He's going to be a big part of the first round, whether that's with the Toronto Maple Leafs and Ryan Reeves. They'll be negating each other's physicality against some of the star players, I hope, or the the, the second round in the Florida Panthers. Um, those are kind of those matchups you look at where Pat Maroon and his experience is going to benefit this group. So talk about uh, Brazo because uh, – am, am I saying it right, Brazo? Yeah, it's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, Big dude. He's a big boy. Um, oh, 6'5", 220, 26 years old, uh, undrafted. Um, he's had a really good two games, uh, three goals. What, three goals in two games? Um, how important is he? You know, you mentioned him after Fitzy's question, but realistically, how important is he? And, and, and do you think that he stays in the lineup? Yeah, he's a, he's a big piece. And, and he's – so, you, guys, I've been on here a bunch, right? And I've I've – gone on about first round picks and how they mm -hmm. don't matter and trade them all and get NHL players. And I've, I've gone on about people complaining about the Bruins prospects and they don't have enough of them. And I just need to, for everyone to recognize, like this is another guy, a 26 year old guy scored a bunch of points in junior hockey. He's taken him a little bit of time to figure out the pro game, but hockey players can be found all over the place. And, and this guy is a perfect example of that. You don't need a bunch of first-rounders in your lineup, and you don't need them in prospects galore down in the mud. You just need the right guys. And the Bruins have done a wonderful job at getting the right guys. The organization's done a very good job. So whatever the rankings are, or whatever NHL prospect rankings some guy makes up, it doesn't really matter if the Bruins are in the top five or the top ten, as long as they have the right guys. And Brazo's perfect because the Bruins needed some more length. They needed some more size. It, I love a little more physicality, but the game really isn't going that way. And, and so Brezzo just really gets it. He's great around the net. He's good in the corners. He's, he can get around the ice more than well enough to, to get on the forecheck and take pucks back. So, again, just a, a, he's a great example of everyone's past different and also that you don't necessarily need 100 prospects to, to really make your team better and have good organizational depth. Okay. That was the perfect example. Okay, Razor. So, uh, obviously, Gresh isn't here. We had a, uh, you know, a, a heated uh, debate uh, earlier in the week about hockey, its popularity, and you can understand, like, where uh, where I sat, uh, you know, as far as hockey's popularity and importance to the sports world. But, so, <laughs> Gresh wanted to officially ask you a question, so he recorded it. So I wouldn't screw it up and try to lead the witness. So here's Gresh's question from the dentist chair. Razor, a question for you. I have always subscribed to the theory of playoff hockey is great. Fourier doesn't get it. So explain to him, Razor, why playoff hockey is so highly regarded amongst sports fans because Fourier doesn't see it. Thank you. Hopefully, I still have teeth. <laughs> All right, there you go, Razor. Did he bring a professional microphone to the dentist's office? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. So that was incredible. Yeah. So thoughts on that? 
Well, why? So you don't like playoffs? You don't you don't think playoff hockey's a step above, huh? For you? No, no. I hold don't. on, hold on. Wait, wait a second, real quick. Okay, so it's amazing. Here's the thing: it, it, everyone yeah. always says there's nothing like playoff hockey. That's I like, hear it over and over and over again. And I would say, yeah, there's something you know better than playoff hockey. It's called football playoffs. So I mean, I don't know why that would be. Why would hockey? Why does hockey get to monopolize? the greatest playoff performance like why is that what makes it so much better than any well, other playoffs i said so maybe i should ask the question i want to ask the question with a question answer the question with a question because oh. so for me i see i of course i don't know a gaps and b gaps <laughs> and all that stuff in football like again could be like you and your power plays i could care less i, I really could absolutely <laughs> care less about any place. kind of like football technique or yeah. routes you run or yeah. all the silly letters you guys use for your different plays i, I don't care yeah, razor um, razor Chris, christian so, never really understood either his his, his big play yeah. was run this way and catch oh, no. it yeah. no no go get ball go get ball <laughs> wow. okay, the caveman. i can't um, believe this is turning on me like this no. this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I'm dead. But, but when I say so, for me, when I watch football, like it's intense all the time. There's one game a week in week one, and or week one of the playoffs, it looks the same to me. Uh, like in the hitting, like someone's always trying to kill each other. Like that's that's just how I think of football. And and I understand like playoff football is better because the teams are all better and you have the best quarterbacks. Of course, I recognize that. But I don't like the intensity looks the same just because football is always intense to me. With hockey, I think there is a substantial increase in the intensity because you kind of have to pace at certain times in an 82 game hockey season and you can't go all out until game one of the playoffs. And then every single game is so important, every shift is so important. So that intensity goes up a lot more in hockey than what it does in football from the last game of the regular season to the first game of the playoffs. That's, that's kind of the way I see it. Um, and, and the other thing that happens too for me is the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs, you have four NHL games going every night. So it's kind of like March Madness for the first 10, 12 days of the playoffs where you have four games going on at once. You've got two at seven. You've got two at ten. It's just nonstop overtime action, overtime goals in play. So that's I, I just think the intensity and the excitement goes up a lot more from the regular season in hockey than, than any other sport. Okay. Well, listen, I did, I did tell him that uh, you know, the, I, I am kind of – you know, on the outside of this because I don't understand it as much as I should. And that's why I rely on you, the smartest right. hockey and, guy I know. I mean, you want to smart, sound you. smart with your friends? When you get to those hockey talk parties, you bring you talk about <laughs> stuff that Razor said. Andy's a gentleman. Andy comes in with a positive attitude, unlike us. So, you know, all, all flowers should that's be left. Right. I don't know about the, all the little meathead, like little, you know, sound effects that he was doing though, when he was like, you know, mimicking me. I don't know. I've never sounded like that ever in my no, life. It was like he was like no, he dipped no, into no. the no. NFL films. I <laughs> know. All right, Razor, what do you got this weekend? Anything? What do we got? Oh, we got Hockey East. We got Hockey East college playoff tonight. Semifinals at the Garden at 4 o'clock. And then the finals tomorrow night, and then ESPN selection show on Sunday. So it is full on college hockey season right this minute. All right, man. Thanks for joining us, and uh, have a great weekend. And we'll talk to you uh, next Friday. Can't wait. Thanks, guys. All right, there you go, Thank you, Razor. Andrew Razor Raycroft.